Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Bitesize Talk. I'm very happy that with us today is Matthias Depper. He is a bioinformatician and systems developer at the NGI in Sweden, Stockholm. And today he is going to talk about the NFCore download command. And uh, off to you. Thank you, thank you Francisca for the kind introduction. I will just share my slides now. And I hope off we go. Yes, so welcome, welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk about NFCore download. And because it's holiday season, as you might see from the participants list, I felt like this is maybe not the best um, title of this talk. And given that, yeah, it's holiday season and we have so many packing tutorials online and also this talk will be streamed on YouTube later, I felt like maybe we should talk, uh, name this talk instead like the ultimate packing guide for your backcountry workflows. So welcome to this um, introduction with me to the NFCore download command. So how do you pack your workflow? Well, unfortunately, there is a big bummer already coming now because we are not exactly the going light folks. So if you wish to pack a workflow that runs entirely offline, you unfortunately have to bring a lot of things. Um, and I won't be able to um, explain everything that you need um, today in this talk. Um, Nextflow itself is quite straightforward, but only quite. So the plugins require some um, previous download and pinning maybe. Um, Obtainer or Singularity is the container runtime that you need to execute all the dependencies. So the tools that your workflow will um, use presumably. And also you will need the references. Um, and that would be a bite-sized talk on its own, like which reference genome to pick for which application, because um, they differ whether you are running like an RNA-seq analysis or a variant calling or something. But all of this is anyway not contained in NFCore download. So therefore I will basically not um, touch these subjects any further. And instead we will focus on the three things that NFCore download will help you with to obtain. And that's the workflow code itself. So the pipeline that you wish to execute. The dependencies, so all the tools that are used within this pipeline and potentially some configuration that you can get from NFCore as well. So these are the three things we will now focus on in the, for the rest of this talk. So how do you get download? Um, so basically downloading download. Well, um, it's quite straightforward. If you have internet, um, you can install it from Bioconda or from PyPy. These are the ordinary commands that you are probably already familiar with if you have ever done some bioinformatic analysis before. Or you can head over to just github.com and of course, or, and then tools, and that's how the repo is called. And there um, you find a comprehensive guide uh, that includes the installation, but also the usage of this tool. So suppose you have done that and you have installed the tool then you should test whether it works. Um, you can run nfcore slash slash help, and then you should see something like here on the right part of the screen, um, an overview of all of those commands. And nfcore download, what we will be talking today about today, um, is basically one of the subcommands. So if you have the nfcore tools, you also have nfcore download already. And in version 2x, which is the current version um, branch, it's called NFCore download. And just to future proof um, this presentation in the future with the upcoming 3x releases, it will be, um, or you will find that command with NFCore pipelines download. Um, <clears throat> and also some arguments may change. So um, take whatever I show next as with a little bit of grain of salt and always know that you can use the slash slash help to see what are the current um, command line arguments and parameters for this tool. So if you just type NFCore download, um, the nice thing is this tool also has an interactive mode. So basically you will be prompted all of the required information. So it starts out with, yeah, please specify the pipeline that you want to download. And then you can select one or multiple releases and so on. So um, you will be prompted step by step all the required information. And when you've completed that, um, the tool basically starts going. 
But this is, of course, not really um, helpful if you plan to download many workflows and if you would like to automate and script that and maybe run it in the background. And for that, there are a variety of, of um, command line arguments that you can use and that will basically um, allow you to provide all the information already by in, when you invocate, uh, invoke the command for the first time. Um, I will only um, skim over the most important ones. Um, and the most important argument at all is, of course, which pipeline. And this is just um, the, the main argument. So if you um, run the command with NF Core download, say, RNA-seq, then um, it will download the RNA-seq pipeline. And the command is basically um, that short because um, the tool already assumes that you are referring to the NF Core pipeline. So when you type NF Core download on ASIC, what it actually does, it downloads uh, it's basically NF Core on ASIC, and it also assumes that the workflow is um, stored on GitHub. You can basically download any arbitrary GitHub repo. Um, so I could also directly download my own fork of the on ASIC pipeline, but of course it needs to be um, an NF Core template um, pipeline. So it doesn't need to be a NF core pipeline, but it should be using the NF core pipeline template. Um, anything else might work, but it also um, maybe um, may fail miserably. So it basically is no guarantees there. Um, try it out and you see what you get. Um, what you then also, of course, need to know when you download the pipeline, you usually have a particular release or version that you wish to use. So in this case, um, I'm specifying the version 3.12.0 uh, and I'm using the R flag for this, uh, R for revision. It doesn't have to be a released version. You can also use a branch like DAF if you would like to test the current development version of the pipeline. And um, you can actually also specify multiple revisions. So you know, if you can't decide which one you like more or you wish to compare two revisions and, and how they affect your results, then you can and download um, one, two, or even more revisions. Um, and this brings us basically already to the next section, and these are the output formats. If you run the command like I've shown you um, just a couple of seconds ago, then um, you will get the pipeline in a plain download format um, or in, in like a basic format um, that um, will look like this. So when you run the command, you will receive um, a folder that um, corresponds to the date and time that you've executed this command. And within this, um, you will find subfolders for each of the revisions that you have selected. And inside each of those folders, you will find a copy of the, the whole pipeline repo with all the subfolders and files of those um, as um, it was released in that version. And the advantage of this is, of course, it's basically what you see is what you get. Um, so all, all the files are there. They are open for you. You can search through them, for example, with crap or any other search tool. You can also edit them if you wish to modify some things. Um, but the disadvantage is there's no version control. So whatever edits you make, um, you have to document them somehow you know, elsewhere so you don't forget that something in there changed. There's a lot of duplication, so um, if you download many revisions, then a lot of files might not change and they are basically um, downloaded multiple times and it's quite cluttered in the folder view. So basically, if you want to run this version, then you basically just run nextflow run and then you specify the subfolder and since that contains a main and f, you can run that workflow. So uh, if you wish to download, like, say, more than two revisions at a time, then I would recommend that you switch to the so-called um, platform download or bear download. Um, so by um, appending the option slash slash platform, and that is basically um, because it was introduced or this platform, uh, this download is basically suitable specifically for the Sakara platform. Um, <clears throat> And if you do this, um, then you can even, because it's it's downloaded as a Git repository, you can even like um, 
create your own revisions. So in this case, for example, I'm adding in the slash slash tag command and I'm calling like the revision 3.14.0 awesome. And then I can also launch the awesome revision of this pipeline, for example, in the future. And what this does is basically it downloads everything into one single um, folder structure that is basically um, called uh, .git. And in there, um, you have some tech subfolders that are like technical and um, it's pretty cryptic if you just uh, open this with a regular file browser, but um, the Git version control system knows how to deal with these and um, Nextflow does as well. So when you specify the absolute path, this is important, it needs to be the absolute path to this .git download, then you can select whatever contained revision is in there. So R3.14.0. And if I use this tag option, I can also specify just awesome. And then and I can launch um, this particular revision from that. The advantage of this is um, you can use version control. So this and this why it's called bear because in, in Git terms, this is a Git clone slash slash bear. And then you can add um, this file as a remote. So you can actually push to this directory. You can edit the file so it's much tidier. You have the version control. You can um, see what changes you did. But the disadvantage is, is it's, it's quite cryptic and you need to know Git if you want to interact with that. And um, the main purpose of this download is, of course, as I've already said, and as, as the option that platform indicates is not to run this like on from the command line, but to use the Sakara platform for it. And um, if you specify there like this file in the platform, um, then and you can get a nicely rendered GUI um, where you can then select all the contained revisions in this. So in this case, um, it's, it's a download that contains a lot of revisions, so I can basically select any of that. Unfortunately, um, to see the screen, you have to define an invalid schema because um, platform is built in the way that it first renders the parameter schemas and you basically can't access that screen without filling the parameters and then they don't match for all the versions. So unfortunately, you have to define an invalid schema if you want to run multiple revisions in platform. Um, <clears throat> that being said, of course, um, you might want to pack even more to your workflow. So top, top it up. And um, this is, for example, possible with the D option that unfortunately only works for plain downloads because it requires that um, the Nextflow config is edited and then you can download um, um, centralized configs from NFCore as well. It contains some settings for, for example, um, university HPC clusters that um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, but what is maybe even more relevant than the configs for you is the dependencies, because every pipeline, of course, runs in a variety of tools, and these are quite many. And um, <clears throat> for that, um, and of course, download helps you with getting the singularity and obtainer or obtainer images for the workflow. Uh, if you specify it, the option S for container system. Unfortunately, there are many pitfalls, so this is um, not exactly something that usually runs with the first try, so you have to f fiddle around with it, unfortunately, a bit. And <clears throat> the, the reason for that is basically that um, the containers are um, quite complex to um, set up. So I would advise that you start by setting, defining an NXF singularity cache gear. This is like a local cache where the images are downloaded and then used from so that not with every run of the pipeline, you need to re-download the images. Um, and those cache, you also need to make available on the offline system later. So basically this is the folder where all your images are taken from when you run your pipeline, actually. And um, you can basically use this cache in various ways. So on the computer that you're um, downloading the workflow, you will also want to define a cache because a lot of pipelines sometimes use the same image in multiple steps, or if you are downloading 
uh, multiple revisions of a pipeline, they might use the same image. And in that case, you only want to download it once. And that's exactly where um, a cache gear is quite handy um, when you define it also on the machine that you are downloading it from. So that works basically if you um, run Singularity. And then you can choose U, that's the container cache utilization um, with amend. And then basically everything will just be stuffed into your local Singularity cache here. And from there you can copy then the whole directory to another remote computer for running your pipeline offline. Um, there's also the option to use this cache in a copy version so basically then and all the images that you need for your workflow will be copied um, to the folder where you where also your workflow files are put into and the the last option basically is the remote option because um, typically you might um, have a situation where you already have some images available remotely and nf core download when downloading uh, um, on your local machine, of course, doesn't really know what is in there already cached remotely. And um, for that reason, you can specify um, an index file, the existing images.txt. And basically, in this file, you tell and of course download, hey, all of those images are already available remotely. And then um, these will not be downloaded again. And um, this file you just create by piping like the output of ls of your singularity cached here into a file and that might look a little bit like this um, so you know, in your singularity cached here then you have a lot of containers um, this is only a small small section so you know, for example at the ngi we currently have about 1200 container images cached on our hpc what you already see from this small section is that the naming of these um, container images is quite cryptic. So some are, are just called start with bio containers, some start with depot.galaxy project and so on. And the reason for this naming is also uh, um, is because these images are defined in various ways. Um, so this is now really the technical deep dive that um, you can basically mostly ignore, but just to show you how this looks like um, in the workflow. So um, in this case, this process defines like two container images, one um, Docker image and one singularity image. The upper one, the depot.galaxy project is the singularity image and the other one is the Docker image. And that can be like one way how a workflow defines the images it uses in a process, but it can also look a bit different or even a bit different or even um, a bit more different. And what, what this basically shows you is that it's unfortunately not that easy for download to really get all the images that it needs and, the, and these images might be specified differently. So in this case, for example, we have a process that has only a Docker image and this Docker image is hard coded to be in the library quiet.io, but that doesn't have to be the case. And so the priority is usually that, and if there is a direct HTTPS download um, of, from Singularity, then it will, or from, or from Galaxy, then it will use that. And if not, then the Docker image will be used and converted to a Singularity image. And um, the caveat here is that, as it's shown also in the sample, um, the Docker images mostly lack an explicit registry. And this causes some headache, um, unfortunately, because um, the download and execution typically happen on different systems. And Nextflow uses this kind of um, nice configuration um, that where you define basically which registry you want to use. But this configuration may differ between the system where you download the images and the system where you actually run the images. And then if that's the case, then unfortunately the images um, are not found. And unfortunately also a lot of pipelines mix Docker images from different registries. And once you convert a Docker reg image from um, that to a singularity image, then actually now the singularity registry applies. So, Nextflow doesn't find images that were converted from Docker to Singularity unless you define it in a particular way in the config. And um, 
this basically means that there is a lot of things that um, you need to consider when downloading and um, the easiest is that you specify specify explicitly which libraries um, download should test this is a flag that you can specify multiple times so in that case with the L flag, the library, unfortunately R is already taken by revision. Um, you will basically test whether this image is available in Quai IO, and if not, then Docker IO and so on. Um, but this is unfortunately pretty um, error prone. So you might see some um, false positive errors that it fails downloading. It doesn't recognize that the image is not in the registry and it might also be that your workflow doesn't find the image later. And um, I've tried to work around all of those issues in the best possible way. And the key problem is that Nextflow doesn't have a fallback mechanism. So when it doesn't find a particular image, it just stops and says, hey, I don't find the image. And it doesn't check whether it might have this image from a different registry. Um, so what nfcore download does to basically prevent this to the best possible way is it downloads the image and then it creates a lot of symlinks with all possible docker uh, registries so for example docker io quai io depot.galaxy project they all point to the same image so you don't duplicate it but um, this is basically the brute force version of hoping that um, nextflow will still find the image no matter what you've defined Find. And I've um, truncated the, in the image or the, the um, registry from the names to make sure that if you define when you run it, all the registries as empty strings, then it should find the images without some links. That's basically the smallest um, common denominator that I could find for those to be backwards compatible. Um, and you also have to mind that um, when, when you convert images, um, it usually takes the architecture of your machine. So if you are like me on a Mac and you want to convert images to use on a x86 um, version, then um, you need to use a virtual machine. And I share my virtual machine on my personal GitHub if you wish to use that as well. For downloading and this basically enables me to download images on my mac os computer for a linux um, a different architecture basically so more lessons learned the hard way um, um go or in the interest of time briefly over those um, since now your singularity cache gear contains a lot of um, symlinks you have if you change the owner or the group of those um, to kind of shared with colleagues, you need to specify the H parameter or, or otherwise like all the symlinks are not, are not touched. Um, you also need to mind that when you copy this over that you copy the symlinks as symlinks and not follow them because otherwise you do not only duplicate the images, you technically quadruplicate them even. Um, the second tip of the day is basically Nextflow home is not um, as home. So this, as a Linux user, this was very confusing for me in the beginning that um, the NXF home is actually the .nextflow itself and not the folder that contain the parent folder that contains the .nextflow. Um, and then Nextflow will basically complain that it doesn't find, for example, its plugins. And um, newer Nextflow versions also no longer mount the directory into the container, the, the home directory into the containers in Singularity. This is actually quite convenient, um, but unfortunately, a lot of tools abuse the home directory to locally cache files. So um, most likely you will run into issues when you use Singularity and um, don't specify the environment variable Singularity home on true. <coughs> Sorry, um, but that being said, basically, um, we also have a comprehensive um, manual online um, that you can use to read about all of this that I've now told you in this um, presentation. And I know that download is a bit a pain. So a lot of people um, complain about this tool um, on Slack because they don't find it very intuitive, but I hope I could show you that it's um, not that easy also with backwards compa 
adaptability to make this work um, also for the older revisions because um, it sits basically downstream of everything and whatever changes whether it's a next flow or in the pipelines or in the modules then um, the resulting changes will affect download and the running of the downloaded stuff and it's sometimes not easy to change this because some changes you might need to do will break it for other things then. so there's very little wiggle room left um, but of course, um, maybe I'm just, um, yeah, not creative enough. So um, if there's something you don't like, I'm very happy if you join and help me with maintaining the tool, um, because there's actually a long um, potential to-do list. So with Sekera now launching the community containers and also um, extending their wave support, it would be really nice if NF Core Download would use these services. Um, it can now with wave can also now basically return like um, the direct um, singularity registries so that would be really nice if it was supported as well. And I think how how we want to do it in the future is that we have a separate container tool so that download is basically only downloading the workflow and if you then want to um, download all the containers, there will be like a separate tool, because I think the way how it's solved currently is. Um, really hard to maintain also for backwards compatibility and um, there are a lot of things and plans that we um, want to follow up so um, join me and enjoy the join of uh, the joy of regular expressions um, to fred and with that being said um, thank you very much for listening today um, <clears throat> I hope I could show you now how you can take your pipelines offline. So go find some data and then go out to explore. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this awesome talk. Um, I have now allowed everyone to unmute themselves if they want to ask any questions. So I open it up to the audience. Uh, we actually have a question from Adam. Um, Thank you all for your hard work. What could Nextflow do to help make this process easier? Well, I've already um, pointed out that the fallback mechanism for the image resolution is unfortunately not there. So basically, um, Nextflow um, has a, a name derivation function that basically takes whatever URL or um, container um, URI that you put into and this basically determines what image um, Nextflow will look for and this is um, not very cons or this this is very consistent but it basically results in um, a, a particular path that includes the registry this makes sense but I would prefer that Nextflow could basically take, let's say, the SHA sum of an image and um, then have a fallback mechanism. So when it doesn't find the image from that particular registry, it will look for an image with the same SHA sum that is from like a different registry or something. So a bit more wiggle room here with the um, container name resolution that would be really helpful. Thank you. Are there any more questions from the audience? Maybe I can ask one. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you said that if you use the download function with a, a different repo that doesn't have the template, it will most likely fail. But what about the old templates? Like they went through a lot of changes over time. Is it actually compatible with old NF core templates? Um, mostly, yes. So um, on the tools repo, we have PyTests. And in these PyTests, we have a subfolder with samples of all like the previous um, module specifications. And I even support DSL1. I will support container definitions that are in the config. So um, <clears throat> I've taken great care that like all of that exists. But um, there are some edge cases. So we have some pipeline releases where, for example, um, users basically use single quotes instead of double quotes, for example. And then basically this um, breaks the whole regex because sometimes, in particular, if you then mix and match the modules and some have it in that way and some in that way, then um, it does not reliably recognize all the container images. But if I adapt the regex, then I break it for some other cases. So um, that's unfortunately the problem. So I try to support backward compa 
stability, but I think with the release of the maybe 3.0 version of tools, we might stop supporting some really old notations and rather um, go for supporting like WAVE and the community containers, which I think is much more important for the future. Yeah, I think uh, that's sensible. And then we will basically refer to like the older tool versions if you need to download like a really ancient pipeline version. Okay, thank you so much. Are there any more questions? Doesn't seem to be the case. Then I would like to thank you, Matthias, for this You're awesome welcome. talk and um, everyone else for joining in today. And I hope to see you for the next bite-sized talk. Thank you very much. Bye.